if you space the oil drops on the salt, it makes it much easier to mix it up. I did say some sugar tricks after all. Use your intuition when adding the oils to the salt, as always in herbal magic. You'll know when the scent's right. Yeah, just a couple more for two. Come on. There we go. Okay. Now start mixing again. Mix them thoroughly clockwise, of course, concentrating on the bath salt's magical purpose. Here it's money. And not just money, but on your need for money. See that need being fulfilled and pull, pour all this energy into the salt as you mix it. When you've added all the oils, continue mixing until the salt's completely saturated with the oil. The scent should be quite strong, and this certainly is. And the stronger the scent, the less salt you'll have to use in your bath. If it's a fairly heavy scent, you'll probably, probably can use two or three tablespoons to the bath. If less strong, use more than this. Now that it's fairly thoroughly mixed, Enchant the bath salts as are described in the incense section of this program. Bottle and label it, and you've finished, and you've finished your first magical bath salt. There are many formulae for magical bath salts, and indeed, any one oil can be used by itself. Carnation bath salts, for example, are useful for increasing your energy and for healing and protective purposes. A simple rose bath salt is fine for attracting a love. As you bathe in the scented water, let your magical needs fill your being and feel the oil's power for vibrations permeating the cell. The bath salts will do their work. Here are four more recipes for magical bath salts. Have fun with them. Bathe with this mixture to bring luck into your life and also as a gentle purificatory rite. When you wish to achieve higher states of consciousness, bathe in this bathe in the spiritual blend. Purification bath is used as a general cleansing bath prior to ritual. Bathe in love bath to draw interested people to you. Still with me? Great. I thought I'd talk about magical herb powders for a few minutes. In New Orleans magical lore, powders were used to literally spread around the powers of herbs. They're often adulterated with talc, chalk, or even flour, but this isn't necessary or even desirable. Here, all magical powders will be made with just herbs and salt. Powders are a convenient magical tool. Protective powder, for instance, can be sprinkled onto floors and purses or wallets, in your car, wherever you need extra protection. Love powders are rubbed onto the body and sprinkled on the clothing. Healing powders are strewn in the sick room and also placed in the bed. They are quite simple to make. For an all-around protection in powder, you'll need rosemary, frankincense, and salt. Of course, the power powders, the herbs, should be ground to a powder in a mortar and pestle first. First, I'll powder the frankincense. As always, keeping in mind the powers of the finished product. So, while I grind, I visualize protection. And as I continue to grind, I visualize protection. Ooh, okay. That's close enough to a powder. <laughs> when I have enough frankincense, I pour it out into the bowl and start grinding the rosemary, which I hope will be easier than the frankincense. The herbs should be reduced to the finest possible powder. To do this, you might want to pick out the stems from leafy herbs. For barks and woods, such as sandalwood, you can grind for hours, as I used to do, or you can buy it pre-ground. I think it's going to take several minutes to powder this, so we'll, uh, we'll just wing it. After that, add a couple, about a teaspoon or so, of salt to the powder, getting all of the table, of course, and mix it together while enchanting the mixture infusing it with your power, with your need for protection in this case. After that, it's done. Use it immediately or bottle, label, and store until needed. Powders like oils, bath salts, and sachets can be given to friends who need a magical boost. You do make them for others. When you enchant, visualize her or him as receiving the benefits of the mixture. I'm sure as you make magical powders, you'll think of new ways to use them and new formulas as well. One of the best uses I've found is to sprinkle your magical altar with the appropriate powders for love rituals, love powders, and then burn the correct incense, the right candles, and so do your spell. Use prosperity powder when you need extra cash or wealth in any form. Sprinkle power powder in your pockets or on the altar for extra magical energy. Love powder is spread on the sheet and rubbed onto the body to draw love. 
place a large bowl of healing powder in the sick room and sprinkle in each corner of the room. All right, right now we're going to do a practice called scrying or herb scrying. In this, we utilize the powers of herbs to strengthen and fine-tune the psychic powers which are the gift of all of us. We are all psychic. We all have psychic minds, which is often called the subconscious mind. Unfortunately, uh, visualize this as being the subconscious mind, and visualize this hand as being the conscious mind. Fortunately, the conscious mind has a firm grip or grasp on the subconscious mind and blocks the psychic signals that are always coming into it. So we can utilize herbs to strengthen our natural psychic powers. To do this, take uh, an herb such as pine, patchouli, cinnamon, marigold, yarrow, or peppermint. Pour it into your hand, about that much, and again, empower or enchant the herb, uh, visualizing yourself as being psychic, visualizing the powers within the herb to help strengthen your, your natural psychic powers. After empowering the herb, scatter it on bare ground or on a plate or on some flat surface. Close your eyes for a few minutes, visualize yourself as being psychic, as having complete access to your psychic powers, then open your eyes and gaze at the herb itself. After a few minutes, if you're properly attuned and the herb is properly empowered, the patterns, the random patterns produced by the herb will trigger your subconscious mind and allow psychic impulses to come in and contact your conscious mind. When this happens, true communication between the two minds has taken place and psychic awareness has begun. Obviously, herb birds. <clears throat> herb magic is a wonderful practice. It's the most satisfying form of magic I know because it basically is a union between we, the magician, and nature. And let's face it, nature is our mother. Nature is the universe. Nature is our microcosm. It's our home. And so using herbs, the gifts of, na of nature, in magic, helps us connect with the earth. Herb magic isn't necessarily ecology, but certainly the ideas behind ecology, preserving our planet, very well fit in with the idea of herb magic. These are 15 years ago, I wondered if they really did contain any power. I found out. They changed my life, and I hope they change yours as well. Get to know the earth. Buy them, collect them, grow them. Practice feeling their energy. Record your notes and impressions in your herbal notebook. Work slowly but surely with herbs, and soon you'll find yourself wondering why you ever doubted in the first place. Herbs are energies which we can use to improve our lives and the lives of those we know and love. All it takes is actually working with them. The choice is yours, but I hope this tape in my book have, if nothing else, introduced you to a larger world, one in which we work in harmony with natural energies to transform our lives into positive, happy experiences. I'll be talking to you again. Take care. Scott Cunningham's Herb Magic books are available at bookstores everywhere or direct from Llewellyn Publications.